Hi, and welcome to, welcome to the third instalment of How Drugs Work. And here we look at how acid base groups can affect how drugs work. Really, we'll look at how the acid base groups can affect binding interactions, and we'll also look at how acid base groups can affect solubility as well. So, let's identify my acid base groups on my adrenaline molecule, which we should be familiar with from the other two videos. We should be able to see here that we've got a weak acid. This phenol group is weakly acidic. So let's just label this there, weak acid. And you should be able to train yourself to watch for an amine uh, functional group and know that that there is a weak base. Amines are weak bases due to the lone pair on the nitrogen, which can be used to form a dative or quant bond with a hydrogen ion. Let's just remind ourselves what um, acids actually are then, or we really should say Bronsted Lowry acids to be more precise. So these Bronsted Lowry acids, which I'll just call acids from now on, they will lose a proton, they call them proton or hydrogen ion donors. So in the process of the... Uh, hydrogen ion being lost we form a negatively charged species so we can imagine this adrenaline molecule all this here is ha and this is simply the hydrogen which has been lost the hydrogen ion which has been lost bases they tend to gain hydrogen ions so again b plus h plus Again, it's a reversible reaction. Uh, the reaction is what we call at equilibrium. So what we're saying is that we've got a, a mixture of all these species. So we've got BH plus. Yeah, so this equilibrium sign um, basically means at some point in time, the forward and backward reactions are occurring at the same rate. So we get a constant um, mixture of these in a certain fixed ratio at a certain temperature. So we can view as all this here then as being B. And then obviously when it gains that H plus, it's going to gain it onto this nitrogen here. And in the process of, for, uh, of gaining that hydrogen ion, we're going to form a positively charged species. Now, how acidic or basic um, these particular groups are um, is dependent on something called the pKa. And if we look at an acid, for example, all equilibrium, all reactions that are at equilibrium have got an equilibrium constant. And in this case, we're going to call it Ka because it's an acid dissociation constant. This Ka value tells me once the reaction is at equilibrium, the ratio of products to reactants. So Ka can be written as the ratio of the concentration of the products, H plus and A minus, and the square brackets indicate concentration, divided by the concentration of the reactants, in this case, HA. Now, as we can see, the stronger the acid is, the more it's going to uh, lose its hydrogen ion, the more it wants to lose its hydrogen ion. And the stronger the acid, therefore, the more products you're going to form. The more products you form, the bigger this number is, and therefore the bigger Ka is. Now, we can express this also as something called the pKa. It makes the numbers a little bit more manageable. And that's minus log to the base 10 of Ka. What that, in effect, tells me, as this increases by a factor of 10, the pKa goes down by 1. So let's just go back. We've said then that the stronger the acid, the more um, it wants to lose the hydrogen ion. The more it wants to lose the hydrogen ion then, the more of these you're going to have, the more of these you're going to have, the bigger this number is, 
the bigger this number is, the smaller the pKa. So we can say then that the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid will be. What we're going to do now is have a look at bases. So let's get rid of this and we can get rid of this and write the similar sort of thing for bases. Now a base, again I'm going to write it down in this way. We can write this down for a base and again this is equal to my Ka, this, this acid dissociation constant. And we can again write um, an expression for Ka, which is the ratio of the products of the reactant. So that's B H plus divided by B H plus. Now, the stronger the base, the stronger the base, the more it wants to gain a hydrogen ion. So the stronger the base, the more the equilibrium is going to lie to, to your left. The more it lies to the left, the bigger this is going to be. The bigger this number, the smaller this number is going to be. Okay, so the bigger this is, the smaller this is. And again, the smaller Ka is going to be, the bigger your pKa is. So we can say for a base, the bigger the pKa of the base, the stronger the base will be. Okay, so let's just have a look at these pKa values. The pKa of this phenol group is 9.45. Put that down as pKa. The pKa of the amine is 8.70. Okay, so let's just rub these out and explain what these pKa values mean. Well, for this acid, what that means is if the pKa is equal to 9.45. That means that at pH four at pH nine point four five, the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of A minus. So in effect, what we're saying is that fifty percent of this OH is ionized. Fifty percent of these H's are lost. Um, what that means as well is that at pH is then lower. Than 9.45, we have a greater concentration of HA. At pH is greater than 9.45, we have a greater concentration of A minus. For the amine, then, with a, with a pK of 8.70, what we can say then is at pH 8.70, the concentration of base is equal to the concentration of the protonated base. So what we can say there, at pH is lower than 8.70, we've got a great concentration of BH plus. Concentration is greater than 8.70, we have a great concentration of this free base. What we want to do ideally is work out exactly what the percentage of um, ionization that occurs at specific pH values. Now the pH of interest um, is around 7.4. That's the uh, physiological pH of blood. So what we want to know is, right, what percentage is ionized uh, of this drug or, or this biomolecule adrenaline at pH 8 at 7.40. Now, there is an equation um, which we can use to help us with this. Now, if it's a basic group, so percentage ionized, and this is for a base, we use the following equation, which can be derived from the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which is something you need to look at in your acid-base notes, or look at a video on uh, acid bases. 
and it's 1 plus 10 to the power pH minus pKa. And if we plug these numbers in, so we've got our pH of 7.4, plug that in there, pH 8.7, plug that in there, we can work out for this basic group, this amine, that physiological pH, 91% uh, of this is ionised. So what that tells me is that roughly 9 out of every 10 molecules of adrenaline at physiological pH are ionised. Now, I can do something very similar. Um, I'm just going to cut and paste this. So if I want to work out the percentage ionised of the phenol group, we use a very, very similar equation. So this time I'm going to put acid. And all we do now is we simply just swap these terms around. So now it's pKa minus pH. Again, this has been derived. It's not a magic equation, which has come from nowhere. It's been derived from the henson hasselbach equation. And we can find out this acidic group, this phenol group, at physiological pH, that one, around 1% 1 is ionised, which backs what we were saying. We were said at, at pH 9.45, half of these are ionised, and at pH is lower 9.45, more of it is as HA, and that's backed up by this equation. pH lower than 9.45, a lot less is ionised. That then has implications on our binding interactions. So let's just scribble this out. And now, because most of this is ionised, then we can actually say that actually, at physiological, phys physiological pHs, this is my predominant structure. We've now got this. Obviously, at physiological pHs, only 1% of this is ionised. So, as I said, it's in effect 99 out of 100 are um, um, unionised. So, my binding interactions now, this is going to be an ionic interaction. And in fact, it does form an ionic interaction with uh, the negatively charged oxygen of a carboxylate group. It just so happens that this oxygen here is a hydrogen bond acceptor, so that's going to be bonded to a, a delta positive hydrogen on the target. And it just so happens that these two hydrogens here are both hydrogen bond donors. And this is bonded to two. These are both bonded to oxygens. So binding interactions, as you can see, are quite important. And you probably get some uh, Van der Waals interactions um, with the benzene ring as well. So you get some sort of Van der Waals or hydrophobic interactions with a non-polar group on the target. So the we can see there that the acidic basic nature of the molecule can affect the binding interactions because this has got a basic group um, and the pKa will tell you the percentage ionized at a particular pH. We can see that physiological pHs most of this is going to be um, as an iron. Uh, again uh, it also tells us that at, at physiological pH, as most of this is going to be um, not ionised. And that's important because if it was ionised, you would lose this um, important, and it is an important hydro, um, hydrogen bond with the target. Now, not only does the acid-base nature affect binding, but it also affects solubility. And solubility um, can be given in terms of uh, a pH dependent solubility is given by um, this term D. And D is the concentration of your drug uh, in octanol. So I'll just put O for octanol. And that is divided by the concentration of the drug in water. 
put drug W and the drug iron in water. Okay, so we can see that the more the drug ionizes, then I, um, drugs in the ionic form are a lot more likely to be soluble in water, and it's going to increase this bottom term here, which is going to decrease your D value. Now, you may be aware that this is usually given in terms of a, a log D value. So basically what that means is then that if the concentration of the drug in octanol is greater than the concentration of the drug in water, then your log D will be positive. If your concentration of your drug is greater in water, like this actually should be a plus, I do apologise, I'll just move this out of the way, it's not, a, it implies it's a time, this is actually a plus here, just be aware. Um, if the concentration of the drug and the drug ion is greater than the concentration of the drug in octanol, then we get a negative value. Um, so obviously the more it ionises, the more it's going to want to be in water and the less, uh, less it's going to be soluble in a, in a hydrophobic environment so you can see there that the acid base uh, um, nature of the of the molecule can affect binding interactions and also affects um, solubility